Okay, we've got done test on the bike here a little while ago. Went to moving inside and the bike doesn't want to roll. So we went and checked our rear brake caliper, make sure it wasn't dragging. So everything looks good back here. We have clearance down here on these pads. Here I'm down over there. And the wheel rolled. So we move to our front wheel. And it has about 20 pounds of drag on it. Doesn't roll very good as you can see. And the pad is tied up in here and the bad part is the caliper itself is hitting right here on the spokes. You see the rub mark on the caliper right here. So this caliper is not made to be on a 21 inch wheel. So that means either those pads are completely worn on that caliper or there's something else going on. Okay, so let's get these bolts off now. And these are metric bikes. Being a Jap bike, it's got 10 millimeter bolts. If this was a Harley, that would be 7 16 or half inch. So, just goes to show you. These new bikes are made in Japan now. Or worse, India. I'm going for India now. Okay, what do we got? Pull it off. Okay, so now the wheel appears to be spinning. Let's keep it off the damn pad. Okay, so that tells me, well, that's dragging right there. You got the wheel held? That's, it's got a lot of drag in the bearings, too. So, see how it locks up on us? You're only hitting the back over there. Yeah. So, we got some problem with these wheel bearings. They, they're locking up in that one spot. You see, it goes about three quarters of the way around, and it stops. And right there, it stops. So we got something wrong in these bearings here, so we have to check that out. And that didn't come off, so we got problems with that. So we got two things against us. Now the pads look like uh, not worn too awful bad, so it shouldn't be dragging, but obviously it is right here. So this cap is going to have to be trimmed for this application. And we got a space to wheel over. The wheel looks pretty even. Yeah, it's pretty even. See, I did my high tech check there. Yeah, clearance, good clearance. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, next thing is let's put the caliper back on there, Gino. We'll go back on. There we go. Okay, just put one bolt up on the top to hold it. Good. Just put it in there, yeah. Just watch it doesn't fall off. Okay, watch your fingers. Okay, it's in there. Okay, now up in here, he's got some kind of a custom cylinder up here. Whatever that number there is. Okay, something. The camera doesn't even want to focus either. That's good shit, whatever it is. It has an adjustment screw right here for free play. So I'm letting the brake fully come back. So, it looks like it has clearance in here, but let's find out for sure. Get the little pressure wrench or something. It's probably going to be metric again. Tight. Give me a little screwdriver and screw that a turn. One turn evenly. It wasn't one turn, was it? It was. Okay. We definitely have clearances in here now. Okay, now go see if the caliper loosened up. I doubt if it did, but. So tight. Okay. Next thing is we're going to pop the uh, pressure here and see if the see if it'll relieve tension on it. So let's get the uh, metric wrench up here. This looks pretty metric. 
not that. Not that. Watch out for me, metric wrench. Well, I'm gonna get a press wrench. Yeah, it's definitely metric. Try 14. a pad here to protect the bike. Zormit pad. I guarantee you someone's going to be making a mess here. 14? 15. 15? Here, pull that over. Hold that up here, do you know? Okay, I see no tension, no fluid coming out. Tighten it up. That's good. Okay, I went ahead and put light tension on here, let some fluid drip out. That way I know there was no air in it and they tightened it, so there's no air in the system. Okay, so that we know that there's no pressure in this brake line. That goes back in the junk box. Actually, we'll probably need it down here. So now we know the caliper itself is a problem. Because there's no pressure from the line, so that means it's the caliper. So we're going to have to go ahead and disconnect the caliper off of here and then find out what the problem is. Something wrong with the pistons inside of there, so we'll take it apart and see what's going on with that. Go ahead and pull that off now. We're going to have to just pop the line and go get a little drip tray to put the uh, catch some of the fluid in it. And then we'll go ahead and pull this front wheel off and we're going to find out if there is a problem. What the problem is with the bearings here. It definitely has a problem someplace. Sixteenth on that side. Yep, mixtures of American and metric. Nice. Pinch bolts loose. Got a pinch bolt here. Nope. Nope. What do you got? Well, it ain't fourteen, so that's American. Oh. That's American. That's a good ridge part. I didn't have any of your catch on it really because it all went to the floor. This is going to make a big mess because we can't keep the fluid from coming out. And I'm not sure what fluid is in this one either. Pull that out as quick as you can. Isn't that tight? Yeah. Looks like some stupid ass rubber style seals on or something. You have a twist in the line there, isn't it? Okay, so we get this up in the air. We'll tie this up high and it won't leak anything. Jam it through here. Okay, so as long as that stays like that, they won't drip anymore. Okay, so go ahead and take this caliper off and put it on the bench and we'll work it up there. And I gotta find a socket for this. Probably a three-quarter. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. Don't care. Slide in there. Let's move on to this. 
Next. Loosen it up. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, go for it. Okay, stop. Okay, spin the wheel. Are the bearings rotating? Yeah. Is the center of the bearing rotating like it's supposed to, or the outer center is going? Well, this means it's probably the axle sleeve is too small, too skinny, or there's something else dragging. Okay, let's go ahead and pull it out and we'll, we'll continue from there. So it looked like the bearing was spinning correctly, so that means the bearing has no inplay on the inside, probably. Pick up the wheel, pick up the wheel slightly. Fork's gonna flip over once you pull it out. Jeez. Okay, I got the fork, pull the wheel out. Okay. Bearing turns freely. Bearing turns freely. Something else is causing it to bind. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, um, what do we got going on here? If you notice, we have a small problem here. What do you think the problem is? The wrong act. The wrong. I'm thinking this is not too much clearance in the bearing, maybe. So the one thing we don't work on the bike is the front end. And of course, the one thing that's screwed up is the front end. All right, so they have the wrong axle for this front end. That's probably why that nut was made like that. Okay, so... That was what, that was a 2,000 liter front end. 2,000 liter axle here, but obviously this axle's wrong. All right, so we're gonna have to go track down some axle variations. And I'm also gonna check the, see what's going on with the spacer, because I think this locks up. So I'm gonna go hunt down an axle, and I'm gonna go ahead and put this in a press and put a load on it and see if the bearings compress and lock up. If so, then that sleeve that's way down in there, it looks like there's a gap in there between a bearing and a sleeve. Looks like there's a gap, which means the sleeve itself is too short. I'm guessing that's our problem. And then of course we have the axle issue, and then we have the other problem is the caliper is, is not, the pistons are stuck in a caliper locking it up, so. We have three problems on the front end now. What a deal. Okay, we'll be back. Here we're taking apart this caliper. We'll get the one next. So was that a quarter inch four point? Yep. So this is the brake pad pivot. Retaining bolts, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, that was in there tight. So Good. Okay, pull the bolts out and then pull the pads up and over here. Try to keep them dry. A little tension. These pads are really tight on there.
Oh, we've got bubble gum in there. These are actually worn quite a bit. These are metallic pads. Get on rotors. Okay, use the bolts. It's got some kind of a rubber thing on the inside. Okay, let's go ahead and take the rest out. Ready? Take the zip gun. What was this, 10 millimeters still on this one? Mm -hmm. spring that's in here to make some rub. So you can see how the lip here on the whoop, you can see it. See how the, has a little bit of a lip right here on this side, does it? So it slides down like that. Keep it from walking around. So you remember how that goes on. Okay, so how does this thing look? Doesn't look too bad. There's our O-ring pad things here. Don't see no evidence of corrosion on anything. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put this back together so we can blow it apart. Let's go ahead and put these back in there. Don't worry about it, it's gonna get messy. Where's the other one at? Here. The two that went together or the different ones? Let's go grab the little mini ratchet. That's good, don't tighten it. Don't tighten it, I already got that. Okay, we need the uh, rubber tipped air nozzle. There's one on that, used to be one on the toolbox up front on the handle where the airline is. So what we're gonna do to take this apart is we're gonna go ahead and stick one brake pedal in here. There's a good one. Then we're gonna go ahead and put air in here and blow this thing apart and we put the pad in here to protect the two the cups from banging into each other and you put this whole rag around here so parts that come flying out will stay put okay just give it a blast right there and that's it keep your fingers out of the end and hit it okay oh the pads came out these come out more than the other ones Right. Hopefully enough we can get in there to get these other ones out too. Okay, so small pads don't make a big noise like the other ones do. Alright, go ahead and take the uh, bolts off that. When you got those big cups, they go boom when it pops out. Big shot you got to go off. Piston out. Let's try the other one. Okay. Looks good. Don't see no corrosion. Don't see no marks when somebody took out a pair of pliers yet. It's got a little bit of gum and goo on here, but nothing too bad. Okay, pull that one out there. Still got some assembly grease in here. 
wherever they put it together. Once again, it looks pretty smooth. Okay, can we get these ones out? No. Hmm. Don't do that. Okay, so we need to get these out. So we're going to use a little pair of uh, channel locks. Are they still floating around? Yeah. The big ones. The ones we use on the rear chain. Okay, give me a piece of some, a little fine carbide, cardboard, something uh, that won't cut through. That's good, that envelope will work. I got some thickness to it. Yeah, that'll work. Fold this in half. Like that. Cut it right here with your knife. Got a piece of wood or something here to cut on. There we go. Alright, that works too. Okay, we'll put that around this. And then we'll go ahead and put the channel locks on there. So just the channel locks the size, they're too small still. Get the right size. If this doesn't work, you can use a little piece of rubber like an inner tube work good. Nope, nope, that's not good. Here, I'm it up already. Okay, that didn't fly. Okay, let's go get a piece of inner tube material. One of those inner tubes up on the hook. We'll get a part of that. Let's cut a piece of that all rubber off. And we'll use that. Where? Straight ahead to your left. Right there, a whole bunch of inner tubes. Grab one that's cut. See them? That's why you keep old inner tubes laying around. Found one that's cut. The oh, light's not on. At least one here's already been cut on. There. Yeah, there's one. I knew we had one around here was cut. All right, cut off a piece of that. Just a strip. Yeah, it needs to be an inch tall or so. That's fine. Why don't you do it the easy way instead of trying to do it the hard way? Here, put this under it. Just cut right through here the straight line, you're good. Do everything the hard way. Now you're trying to cut me. Flip on the other light switch over there. This works a lot better if you're not fighting everything. Now you got to make sure you don't compress right where the O-ring is. This is a relatively smooth jaw vise, but still got to be careful. Okay, tighten it up. It does more damage when it slips than if you torque on it. Okay, hold that up in there and you should be able to get something to grab a hold of now. And it's coming. Just keep working it like that. There we go. The key is you don't want to be sliding back and forth here without the piston move because it just chews up the piston. See that mark right there you put in there from before? That was when you cut through the paper. So we'll have to do a little uh, fine detail on that. Stick it up on there. Okay, it's moving. We're good. There you go. Okay. Undo the vise. Okay, bring everything back. Oh, we even got some more brake fluid coming out. Great.
Okay, so don't see anything that looks really nasty. The light go off. Just throw anyway you got it with the vice. We're gonna have to clean that up right with the pliers cut through again. That's why I don't like using pliers if you don't have to. You mars them up. So I have to get them a real thin file on your little sandpaper, real fine paper and clean it. Okay, I don't see anything that keeps this thing from binding up. You can see the grease and crap they put in there originally, it never cleaned out, obviously. So we're going to take this all apart, clean this up really good with some brake clean. And then we'll see what it looks like, put it all back together again. Alright, we'll be back. Okay, we're getting ready to cut this, uh, fly cut this uh, caliper half where it was hitting on the spokes. So in all my crap I found this angle block. It has small holes in it for quarter inch bolts, so I'm able to use one bolt to hold the caliper half to the block, and the block is held in the vise, so it allows me to hold it. So then I mounted it with a one degree, wrong direction, one degree. <laughs> I want to cut more here, not here, I got it backwards. That's called a screw up. We want one degree negative going down. Not that way. So you want the line to go down. Tighten it up right there. Hold it, let go. There you go. Right there. Okay, hold on. Go 90. Give or take a little bit. Okay, clean it up. And I got 20 thou worth of clearance this way. We're 0 0.02 right now this way. I don't know if you can see that. See anymore? See it? Just say yes or no so we can move on. Did you ever see it? Yes. Okay, good. All right, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting this corner here first, and then we'll bring it down to this as we cut it away because it's only hitting right here. You can see the spokes are dragging right here. It's barely hitting all here, but it's knocking the paint off over here, the powder coat. So it's hitting real heavy on this corner. So we got 20 thou more cutting on this corner from this corner, and this is going to be cut probably at least 20 or 30 before this will come in. So we'll be cutting this high spot down basically. We're going to use a fly cutter because a fly cutter has very low cutter pressure. So we'll have a very low tendency to rip this thing out of here. And if it jams in or something, it'll just come around a trunk and put a groove out instead of ripping the whole damn thing out of here. So it's a lot safer than a regular email for doing pokey crap like this. Alright, let's lock that down right there. That's called a hit. Clink. Okay, so we set our dial indicator there. Yeah, 
that's 25 right now. Pretty good cut on the cow because we don't know how much material we got. That's only on that one far corner. Cut there. See, it helps to have weird tools laying around. So that's my new caliper cutting fixture now. All right, so there's the angle cut that we did. So, still feels pretty thick in there. This is where we cut the most, is right up in here. That's still pretty solid up in there. That's right up in this very corner right here. It's definitely thinner than it was. I think we still got at least 50, 60 minimum left, probably about 100. But uh, who knows? We'll find out. Okay, so we can uh, throw this up in the wheel, see if it contacts this spot. And if it doesn't contact it, we're good to go. We'll probably shoot a bit of black paint on here to make it look a little more even, and then we'll, uh, that way we can see the mark also. So that's where we're out on the caliper for now. Okay, here's the axle that came out. This is stock replacement axle for an 87 to 99 bike. This is a 2000 lighter, but it fits in the fork, so I don't care. It's the same thing that was in here, obviously. The difference is somebody cut this thing down. This one hasn't been cut down. So. Instead of being nice and loose, it's nice and tight. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this in the press, squash this thing, and see if the thing locks up.
Obviously the bearings are fine. I'm not sure what locked that thing up. We got four times, we're down to two times on that axle right now, so whatever was causing that drag, it's it's not the axle. I mean it's not the bearings. <coughs> My guess is with the with this axle in there, <coughs> the bearings are not correctly concentric like they should be. They were they were cocked a little bit and causing them to bind up. That makes that easy. That's a quick fix. So now I've got to reshim it probably and do some other work, but this part's good. Good deal. So nice when one thing works correctly. I'm going to put new brake pads on this and we got <coughs> a lot of wear on this rotor, but it's still still within wear spec. So alright, that turned out okay. So we'll be back.